These two are right in the hunt. Well, I think we should call legend of the sport in Thomas Adamek. And he has a big spring in his step and he truly believes that he can beat Gerald Miller on October the 6th. No, Thomas Adamek is a legend. Thomas Adamek, great fighter, going to be a Hall of Famer. And these two are right in the hunt, particularly Gerald Miller. He's been there now, he's had a couple of big, big wins. He's working with us moving forward and delighted to be working with Dimitri and Greg Cohen as well. Um, this is a young man that can really fight. He can really talk as well, which you'll find out soon, but that's all good for boxing. But you know, we feel that Jarrell Miller is the best heavyweight in the world. And no matter if it's Thomas Adamak, Deontay Wilder, or Anthony Joshua, he is going to take care of business on October 6th. Uh, so we're very excited about this opportunity. Thank you to Matchroom. Thank you to The Zone. Thank you to this beautiful arena. And uh, as Jarrell will say, there's quite a large Belize community in Chicago, from what I understand. So there's probably going to be a lot of Polish people, but I'm sure there's going to be some Belize folks as well hyping us on. And, and I know that, that uh, many Brooklynites are going to make the trip uh, to support Big Baby Miller. Jarrell, Dimitri, myself, we've been working with Eddie for the last couple of fights. You know, this is a great opportunity for Jarrell to take the next step toward becoming heavyweight champion. At the current ranked top 10 with every governing body, the undefeated Jarrell Big Baby Miller. First, I want to shout out to the Eddie Hearn Matchroom Boxing and Calzone. Uh, I mean, the zone. I'm thinking about pizza right now. My bad. <laughs> Adam Mac got me. Adam Mac made me kind of hungry when he called me the boy. You know, he, he he's a legend. But when you find a young stud like me, boy, I, sometimes parents need to get their butt whooped. You know, so this is gonna be one of those fights when the young the young man gonna take it to pops. You know what I mean? Put him on some crutches real quick. Bring the ambulance, cause it's gonna be early night. And I'm not trying to spend an extra round in that ring. I went to my last fight against Johan Duhapis, who was a tough French guy. And you know what we did to him? We cooked that French fry. So coming uh, October 6th, we gonna put in this work. October 6th is my day. I be best. Monday, we start to camp. I wanna say good luck for my opponent. I'm respect him, he's a good boy, young boy, but I'm older and smarter. We'll see who is a better October 6th. I thought it was worth running through some of those July statements for the sole fact, and I mean fact, there's been next to no coverage in the build-up to this October the 6th fight, and barely anyone is talking about it. This may actually be one of the few preview videos that you've seen on this fight, and the complete lack of hype to me, it means hardly anyone has been looking forward to or is excited about this fight, which is a little bit strange given Jarrell Miller is a top 10 contender. But to be honest, the lack of coverage, the lack of excitement, it's fair to a large extent because Miller, he's blatantly cherry-picked a faded Thomas Adamek in what's been labelled a mismatch by most fans. Thing is, and I have to go on for another dig here, Jarrell Miller is always telling us how good he is, that he's top three, he can beat Joshua, he can beat Wilder, even though he's not ranked in the WBC because he won't sign up to the clean boxing program. But you even heard his promoter, Dimitri Salita, say he is the best in the world. Yet he's taking on a past prime Adamek, who hasn't been a serious factor in the division in over five years. As one of my Patreon supporters, Adam Fahey, likes to say, Miller has devolved into this European pension slayer type. He's got recent wins over Marius Wok, Johan Durpa, both guys on the slide, and seemingly soon to be Thomas Adamek added to the resume. That is, if everything goes to plan. So with all the talk from Miller and the reality side of the game not lining up, it's no wonder that fans have gone cold on this fight. And I really hope Eddie Hearn, who is, you know, obviously looking after this card for DAZN, I hope he takes heed of it, because these are not the fights that fans want to see. And I can't see in any shape or form how this is a good advert for the DAZN platform. It's a terrible fight. I'm sure there's going to be a number of people who are watching this video who've come in to watch it with the sole purpose of going in on Miller in the comment section. And again, fair enough. It's a terrible look, and Miller's profile, it's been dinged again. 
And no doubt after he rolls through Adamek, we're going to hear from him how good he thinks he is. That he's done more than other heavyweights in the division. That the champions are ducking him. Anthony G. String Joshua this and that. It'll be super cringy. You just know it will. But anyway, I better move on because I'll just keep going on and taking digs. But to the fight itself, I'm expecting one of two things to happen. The first being Jarrell Miller is going to do his normal pressure thing, relentless pressure, throw a large volume of mostly slappy type arm punches, and he'll end up grinding Adamek into the dust through his pressure and volume within maybe five to six rounds. And I'm sure Miller will be looking for a quicker stoppage. And I'm sure he's hoping to get a spectacular KO. And part of the reason to pick a faded fighter to face will be to look impressive. So there is some pressure on Miller to come through, stop Adamak and look decent in the process. The second scenario that I see that could happen is still a Jarrell Miller win. But where he ends up working much harder than expected to get that win. If he's taken 9 or 10 rounds, is a bit patchy, he struggles to land clean or hurt Adamak until late on, it won't be a good look for Miller, especially with some of the stuff he's been saying. That he's, you know, not going to be doing any overtime, that he's going to, you know, put Adamak on crutches, all this sort of stuff, making old jokes. It will lead many to question, how good is Jarrell Miller? Is he a hype job? And that question is already on the lips of some fans who are openly questioning Why has he taken his foot off the gas as soon as he's got to near the top of the division? He's opting for softer fights when he should be proving he deserves a title shot, not just taking the easiest path to a title. But in terms of Adamek, I'm not expecting him to win. But he could very well be game for the early rounds. He could look maybe good, quite sharp. You know, just think Alexander Povetkin versus Anthony Joshua. An older fighter, Povetkin, he looked quite sharp early on, but he did end up fading as the fight went on. And Adamek, he could potentially be in that mold. He might start off quick, look good, be evading Miller, maybe landing some of his own work, but then start to fade. And he does have an opportunity to potentially spoil and frustrate Miller which is something Miller will not want. And the ideal situation for the Brooklyn fighter is to blast Adamek out in a round or two. But my pick is he might have to work a bit harder than that. The what next for Miller, it's almost more interesting than the actual fight itself, with Miller having one more fight on his two-fight to zone deal. And you better believe he won't be allowed to take another soft fight. Eddie Hearn won't allow that. And Miller, he's been banging on about wanting to face Manuel Chart for the WBA regular title. But I'm not so sure that's going to happen either. Because Char's status as the champion, it's up in the air due to alleged doping violations. Char is saying himself that he's innocent. And his recent fight with Frieza Kendo, it was cancelled as a result of the allegations. And he has since put some stuff out on social media saying that, well, here's the B-sample you know, look, I'm clean, but the WBA has not cleared him yet. So Miller's title shot, the one that he's been saying that he wants, the one that he's been sort of just saying, this is what I'm doing, this is where I'm going. Everything else, this IBF eliminator that I turned down with Kubrat Pulev, a potential eliminator with White, I'm not interested, I'm going the WBA route because I want that strap. It may not happen, And it may not happen on the time scale, if it does happen, that he originally imagined. And as I said in a recent video, he might need to actually reassess his options and move away from this WBA dream. Or at the very least, he's got to consider other options because all the eggs in one basket is a dangerous place to be. And at the moment, it's not quite panning out. He's no longer in the IBF because he refused the Kubrat Pulev eliminator. He's not in the WBC because he won't sign up to the clean boxing program. And he's being dropped down to fifth in the WBO. So Jarrell Miller, he actually needs to think, I'm going backwards here or out of rankings altogether. Can I pin my hopes on the WBA? Seriously, they've got to think about that, surely. And I would note as well, there will probably be a number of fans who are currently souring on Jarrell Miller. And fans, they'll be going crazy in on Miller if he struggles in any way at the weekend, given that he is expected to beat Adamek handily. 
And Miller's got to be aware of this, that fans are turning off him because of what he's saying, his actions, some of the stuff that he's doing. And he needs to take stock and actually realize he's been shedding some support. And given that his style isn't uber fan friendly, does he actually want to end up being the guy that's got no fans, but he's got a big mouth and nobody believes him? Because at the moment, he's not backing up the chat. What do you make of it all? What are you expecting of this fight? Should Miller blast out Adamek? Is it going to take him five or six rounds? Or will he struggle? Will Adamek surprise and take him later into the fight? Make Miller look bad in part? Or are you expecting an upset? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.